Ben Reich was mothballed by Chevis Brothers in 2002 and sold to a group in 2004 headed by Billy Walker. No relation to Johnny. Since then, Ben Reich has produced some attention-grabbing single malts. Well, since the, the distillery had a slightly checkered past and it opened in 1898 and closed in 1900 and didn't restart distilling again until 1964, which is a fair old break. But during all that time, they continued malting barley to be used for uh, Chivas Brothers and, uh, and other owners. Uh, colour change is 100% due to the cask that the whisky has been stored in. Uh, even a slight difference or a big difference. Uh, these ones here, for example, you can see that this is mainly sherry wood. This one a bit lighter, uh, probably a, a bourbon hogshead. And the very the, the lightest of all would be uh, whiskey matured in a, a bourbon barrel. The flavor again, on top of the color, is completely different. Again, controlled by the, the type of wood that you use to mature the whiskey in. Uh, if I can start with a 12 year old, this is what the, the, the whiskey you would most associate, I, I, I suppose, with uh, a space side uh, whiskey. It's a very light, pale, sweet uh, whiskey. Uh, very pleasant to both nose and taste. Uh, nice, nice character, nice body, and a, a very smooth, easy finish. Okay. Although Glendronic is listed as a Speyside distillery, we think of it more belonging in the Highland category. The distillery was mothballed for a couple of years and in 2005 became part of the Chevis family after the breakup of Allied Domecq. But it was purchased in 2008 by the Ben Ryak owners who've already released some new expressions. So, although you'd have furnace in below, it didn't mean it had just heated up to, to the bottom of the still. The, the fumes come out, the hot glasses come out, and come right round the flue plate and right round and then up the stack. So you've got a tremendous heat coming up the copper and not change the colour to this quite dark chocolatey colour rather than the bright copper colour. The two outside ones are your wash cells, they're exactly the same. On the northern coast of Aberdeenshire, you'll find Glen Glassow Distillery. It began life in 1875 and was operated most recently by the Edrington Group until it closed from 1986 until 2008. Last year, Edrington sold the old distillery to a group that wanted to revive it. We visited during the restoration. What happened was I was approached by a group of investors that were wanting to buy into the Scotch whiskey industry. They, they, they made quite a bit of money, foreign investors, in energy trading, and they were looking to diversify and to help small companies grow. One of the main reasons for this being closed back in the 1980s, what the previous owners did was they were trying to replicate spirit from one of their other distilleries. So we have a water reservoir um, about 800 metres from here, which the water came down into this room from the reservoir, was passed through a softener to soften it more like a space-eyed water and then pump back up to the other half of the reservoir and then to come back down here for the process, which is tremendous amount of pumping back and forth up and down hills and such like, just to achieve a soft water, because that's what they felt was required to make the spirit that they were looking for. That's one thing we're not going to do. We've ripped out that softener plant. The, the stills don't look in particularly nice condition because the lacquer has all come off and they're slightly corroded. But a quick polish and a re-lacquer, you're talking two or three days, will make it look a lot better. We've also got scaffold in the road here because the engineers are having to fit new pipes, new valves everywhere. You know, so give it, a, give it another six weeks and it'll be looking like a, a pristine still house, hopefully. You know. The distillery made their first new spirit on December 4th, 2008. It bodes well that we were lucky enough to sample some of the older stocks and found them all to be exceptional. One of the larger Speyside distilleries was little known until the mid-90s. It was primarily the mainstay of the Cuddy Sark blend. Located just a few blocks off Main Street, it's one of a half dozen distilleries still located in Rothes. Ronnie Cox is the Glen Rothes Director and Global Ambassador. 
Well, as you can see, we're standing on a road here, and we say we've got spirits on both sides of the road, right? We've got spirits on this side and spirits on that side. It's the only distillery with a working cemetery next door to it. There are one or two that have little cemeteries, um, but this is the only distillery with, that has a working cemetery next door to it, and as you can see, it is still being used. So when your relative was, was put to, to rest um, and was covered over with, with earth, then for three or four days afterwards, uh, there would be a gathering together of your nearest and dearest, mainly men actually, no, no women, but they would gather together in this hut here and they would drink the night away telling stories about their dear departed friend or relative. And uh, that was to stop the, the grave robbers coming to dig up the body and take it away for Thank surgical you. practice. This is a, a winter's dram, the 1985. This is a bigger, uh, whiskey than the 1991. Very much a sort of after dinner dram and when I say winter you can imagine you know, it's getting cold, um, the winds have taken the leaves from the trees and that, that smell of sort of rotting leaves on the ground, wet leaves on the ground. A um, little bit of coolness and you need something which is going to warm the cockles of your heart as you, as you come in from a, a wet day's garden.